Hi everyone, I'm back. And like I said, I would be, so this is So Sunday, part two of the 21st, 7, 21, 19, part two, the insomniac hours for all of you guys who are up late all the time. This is where we hang out. So I'm still trying to get my phone started because I cannot see, like normally I can sort of read the screen when I use my TV, but I'm just using the laptop only and it's like, squinting is not even helping. So yes, I'm trying to get my phone started so I can at least read comments while chit chatting. And I just got to turn the volume down and make sure it's not going to be too loud. Okay, it's down. That way I could see. All right, so we got Vicky, Susan, and Michelle. Hi, guys. Um, I wasn't, I'm not going to assume a ton of people are actually going to join me for this. So I'm just going to just do my thing. Um, not sure I will be able to see many of these, but I am here tonight. Oh, don't worry about it, Susan. I do insomniac sewing quite often, as, as often as I can, I should say. But normally I try to be on within, I try to run off of East Coast hours uh, because a lot of my friends here and a lot of you guys that follow are East Coast and or in other countries. So I try to be on to where everybody can see um, live feed videos. So... I just realized that the camera is up, but I was typing and I had to have it so I could see. So I'm going to tip it down just a smidge so that you guys can see. I put all my pieces right here. <laughs> I just went ahead and numbered all my rows and cleaned them up. And they're all in the order I need them to be. And I'm just going to sew them through. And then sew two rows at a time like I started. I haven't done any sewing since you guys saw me last. So now I'm just going to start running all this through the machine. So... Eastern Sandwich, so I appreciate it. If I missed it, I'll rewatch. Okay. Yeah. Hi, Pamela. Yes, I'm back. You's back. We's all back. Well, some of us. <laughs> but I'm just going to keep sewing and sewing. So you guys can chit chat amongst yourselves or with me. I will catch as many comments as I can see while sewing all these rows through. Like I said, I just went ahead and put my little tag on with the number, which keeps them in an order. Let's see if you can see that. So this one's row five because I did four rows already and it's oriented in the direction I want to sew with a pin on it and they were all picked up the same way so as long as I keep this pile exactly how it is they shouldn't get messed up and we're just going to sew so yeah this is this is what normally for east coast guys you guys this is your insomniac hours here my west coast peeps we're only at 9 p.m so this is not even insomnia for us this is normal day for us in the heat <laughs> Oh, and I forgot to rock I forgot to roll some bobbins. <laughs> I should have rolled some bobbins while I was off. So when I run out, we're gonna have to oh no, I have one. I have one filled with white. If anything, I could just put a different color in, I guess. I try to stick with the same color on top and bottom, even though it doesn't matter when piecing, but because I'm using white, I 100 percent always use white with white piecing. Now, if I was going to use black thread, black thread would definitely be for something with black uh, fabric or really, really dark fabrics. Um, just keep that in mind because sometimes if your seam, your stitch length is too wide, you can actually see the stitch color of the thread that you used. Also, if you use, say, a red thread because you're trying to use up all the threads you have behind white, when you flip that seam back, you will actually see that red thread or black thread or any color that is not white. <laughs> I mean, a cream is okay on white, but I just thought I'd get that one out there for those of you who like to use up your old threads that have just been sitting in a drawer like I have one filled with. <laughs> I tend to just stay away from all those and save them for like applique when I need to match something. That's definitely what I use my drawer for or hand sewing something. When Lexa comes over, she's like, mom, I got to sew my hole in my shirt. Can I match my thread color? And I'm here, there, there's a the drawer, match it up. Clean your machine today, Vicki. Fun. Did a lot of dust bunnies come out of it and thread. <laughs> I cleaned mine last, was it last week? Yeah, last week. It's all cleaned and oiled, so my machine runs just a little bit better. But, of course, I've made, like, what, four, one, two, three, 
I've done four quilt tops since I cleaned my machines, so it's probably already filthy in there. I also changed my needle, which is something you guys know I don't actually ever really do. But I changed my needle. I had to because of the free motion quilting, so I had to change my needle. But usually I don't. I'm pretty lazy about that needle change. It doesn't really get as dull as you guys think it does. It just... I don't know. To me, it's pointless to change it out after every project to me. And it's a waste of money. It's still good. So, I use them until I can't use them no more. Or until it looks like it's creating really big holes or my stitches look off, then I'll change it. Okay, I need mine. So, you need your machine serviced, Michelle? And Vicky, yours wasn't bad, huh? Well, that's good. At least it was clean, able to get cleaned. Oh, I have an itch on my eye. I think it's an eyelash. Don't you guys hate when that happens? I think there's an eyelash in my eye. All right. Just started the sound. Just start, oh, making a funny sound. Grinding. Yikes. Which machine, Michelle? Michelle's lucky enough to have multiple machines as well. So. Some of you guys are. I have two. Well, technically three if you count the long arm. So technically that is a quilting machine. It is a machine. It runs off of a plug and it stitches. I used to have a lot more. Your embroidery machine? Ooh, yeah, you need to get that serviced. It's probably all electronic stuff too, which makes it even worse. You know what really makes a big mess inside of a machine, for those of you who don't know, is using the thread cutter constantly. If you can't tell, I am using my thread cutter every single one of these blocks, and it creates this big, huge dust mess under there from thread clippings, and it kind of uh, is kind of annoying, but I have to use it because I'm going so fast. Could you imagine how much longer it would take me if I pulled every time like this, pulled it away? I mean, that would take me forever, plus I get those long, loose threads that I don't want, so this next one is going to start with a long thread, and I don't want those coming up from the seams. I hate when that happens. So I just use the thread cutter, but you could, you know, I mean, I don't know, or snips, but it just seems like it takes too long for me. And most m machines have thread cutters on them now. All right, I'm going to go lay this down. I'm just laying them down instead of uh, sewing them together for now. Just to make sure they're in the correct orientation, which they are. They never know. Sometimes you can stack them up and they still get messed up. I've done that twice now, stacked up blocks using small blocks like this. And two times now in all four years, I have accidentally had a block the wrong way and had to go in and pluck all of it out. And that was hard because I didn't see it until after the whole top was together. It's a good thing it didn't happen while the um, quilt was being quilted and then noticed after quilting because then there's nothing you can do about it. But I noticed it before I quilted it, so hate when that happens, but it does, it happens. Could be that thread I use a whole lot more working on. Oh yeah, the cushions definitely probably clogged it all up. Oops, which way are these? These are supposed to be right, not left. Duh. That's that little embroidery machine, right, Vicky? Yours is the 4x4. Four four. I 
I've talked with Scott about getting one in the future, a little embroidery machine, nothing big, just to do tags and little, you know, if I want to add some kind of embroidery to a block or custom names or something or a little picture or something, just a small cheap machine for the future. Not right yet, but in the future, we talked about it, so I might get an embroidery machine. Probably when this other brother dies is when I'll get an embroidery machine instead. That way it can be used as a regular sewing machine or embroidery, if that makes any sense. Viking was strong, you used your brother, and now you're really liking your brother. <laughs> I hate that brother, the one that I have. I don't like, I don't like it at all. I don't like him. I like this Juki. If I was to get another machine, I'd probably get a Juki. Or there's the other versions of what is made by the same company as brother, which is Baby Lock. So I could go toward Baby Lock or uh, there's another... Um, Somebody told me that the genome machines are really good too for quilting, but I don't know. I'll probably just get another Juki. Juki makes embroidery machines, but they're like $3,000, so I don't have the money for that at all, ever. <laughs> My quilting machine was more important, so I don't need all that other stuff. I'll just get a cheapie and deal with it. If and when I finally do get one, I should say. You have a genome. Hi, Lacey. Yep, I'm back. Back, back, back. Back, back. I'm back. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. I thought I would be out of thread by now. I know I was doing a lot of sewing the other day. It's lasting. Wow. It's lasting. Nineteen years, the same machine. Wow. I had a brother, um, I don't know, just an old fashioned turn knob kind uh, from the eighties, nineteen eighty seven, and I finally got rid of it last year. I actually had two. I got one in 87 and the other one I got in like 94 or something. And yeah, I finally got rid of it last year because I was like, no, this is what I call super slow. It was the slowest, dumbest, slowest machine ever. I don't do slow. I am fast. I'm a get her done quilter. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's funny. Get her done, Coulter. That's what I am. Okay. Okay. I'll uh, I'll see all all the emails later. Um, emails usually I do in the evening after I'm done with any and all projects. You know. <clears throat> Yep, so I'll get to all those emails later. Obviously, Facebook and like Instagram and stuff, I usually see all that during the day because that goes straight to my phone. But emails is a tablet or phone. It just depends on how many emails are there. Sometimes I have a whole heck of a lot. Sometimes I have none. All right, this one is to the left. Well, let's see. Susan was able to open the layer cake menace. It just had to hit the options twice and make sure it was open in PDF. Oh, okay. Endless Dog, use your Athena 2000 by Singer. Bought it in 1972. Wow. I want an old Singer machine, like the kind that's in a table. I think that would be cool. I don't know where I would put it. There's so many of them online, too, on the marketplace for sale in my area. There's like five or six of them. Someone has an old white for sale. They want too much for it, though. 
And then there's one machine. Oh my God, this is the neatest thing I ever saw. And it's online. It's in my local area. It's, um, I don't remember the brand name, but it's a machine and it's two sided. So if you sew from it this time, this way, it's one type of machine and if a regular machine. And then if you sew at it from this side, like there's knobs on the other side, it's a serger. It's a sewing machine and a serger. You can literally, there's knobs on both sides of it. The weirdest thing I've ever seen. They want a lot for it, but pretty sure it would be a pretty neat machine to have, but it's old, like really old. Uh, I mean, I can't say too old. It's probably as old as I am and I'm almost 40. So, but yeah, it's the neatest little thing. That's not little. It's actually kind of like this size almost. It's got a lot more gadgets on it though. But yeah, it's a double sided machine, half regular machine, half serger. got to be an old thing but it's it's neat i'll have to uh somehow figure out how to take a picture of it off of the internet from the for sale site and uh share it just so that you guys could see in the facebook group it's the weirdest thing ever they didn't know they even existed really michelle you've had one Yeah, I, I was wondering how it works, too. I really wanted to go look, but they want too much money for it. So, obviously, I'm not going to bo bother people when I'm not going to buy it, obviously, if that makes any sense. But it's definitely neat. And then there's a machine that the name of the brand is the name of the street that I live on. Which I don't know if I should tell you guys, because you guys don't know my real address, but it's called Discount. <laughs> Or Viscount. I don't know how they want to pronounce it. Some people pronounce it Viscount, but it's pretty cool. It's the same name as my street name. Oops, my computer's popping up with some stuff. I better clean it out real quick. Okay. All right, let's see. Hold on. I like a treadle machine. Get some quilting done and aerobics at the same time. Sandy has one, a foot pedally thing go. I guess once you get it started, though, it's actually not that hard. I don't know anyone with one to even like go play with it. I probably do know someone with it. I just don't hang out with anybody. So that would be my thing. I, I don't go to anyone's houses to mess with their machines. But I probably know people with them locally to go sit and sew. That would be weird to quilt with one, I think. Once you get them going, they go. So you don't really have to use your feet as much, I guess. You just get it spinning and it goes pretty quick. And it'll probably sew as fast as you can move your legs. That would be hard for me, but it would be neat to have. How do you know which way to sew it? How do I know which way to sew what? What I'm sewing? That was from Michelle, by the way, asking me that. I'm trying to scroll to see because you guys are talking a little bit faster than I can see. Is it the machine you mean? Which way to sew? I don't know. If that's what you're talking about. You get into a rhythm and you don't think about it. Oh, with the treadle. Yep, I would like to have something like that. Just one old-fashioned machine of some sort, something different, but I wouldn't know where to put it. And I'm not putting no more stuff in the garage. No more. As soon as there's no more kids here ever, I am putting my big machine somewhere in this house. I don't care if it goes in the center of the living room. <laughs> it's going in the house. Of course, by the time that comes, um, I'll probably you know, like, I don't know, have a different machine, <laughs> I'll upgrade. <laughs> I just keep getting up to lay them where they're supposed to go, by the way. We're on row eight now. This bucket is in my way every time I get back into my chair. I know which way to put the rows together because I'm just doing it. 
You may have to sell because your silly daughter doesn't want it. Well, you know, when you guys, the silly family members don't want things, you can always donate them to me. <laughs> That'd probably be a lot in shipping. I would have to travel to you guys to get things. But I'm willing to take gifts. It's funny. That'd be a lot of traveling. I would become the traveling Tiffany's quilting life. I would probably wear myself out just one day on the road. I would need to live in like some kind of travel trailer. <laughs> that would be kind of cool though. A traveling quilting channel. Go and see everybody and hang out and teach one-on-one -on -one during the live videos. For those who would be willing to be on camera, you know. Oh, I know. It would probably cost a whole heck of a lot. Those things are probably heavy as heck. I would say for people who have family members that don't want your stuff, you know, when, when you're gone and they don't want your stuff, I would say start donating it to people you know that would use it, though. That's what I would do in the future. If my girls, and I see that they've not actually put any interest since, you know, they've done the things that they've done with me in here, if they put no more interest into it, I'm just going to make sure if Scott can't sell what he can sell off, that everything else just gets donated to the local quilt guilds and or, you know, somebody who wants to start that lost everything or they tried starting and the hurricane took it all away or, you know, things like that for people who could really use it and you know they're going to use it. That's what I would donate to. I've talked with Scott about that many times. Like, what are the kids really going to do with my long arm if something happens to me? Because none of them are going to want it. So are they going to sell it? Or can it just get donated to somebody who's going to use it and do something with it and do like I did? Just start designing and teaching or something. base is raw. Oh, yeah, those, it's going to be heavy if it's wrought iron, that's for sure. But, you know, might change her mind, right? Good for when she realizes what she's missing. Kind of sucks that our, our daughters and sons, you know, the ones that, of us that the kids aren't interested. I have four kids and only one has put interest in my quilting, but yet she still hasn't come over to finish the projects that she started. Sorry, Lexa, if you're watching this later. I mean, it'd be nice if she came over and started getting some more projects done. She doesn't have to be totally into it like me, but the one project that she was working on that's in the drawer is Half Square Triangle. Exactly what I'm doing now, except she wasn't going to do the Around the World. She was going to do something else with Half Square Triangles. And yeah, it's exactly that. She hasn't even finished sewing all of her half square triangles. She's got a lot to go. <laughs> a whole heck of a lot to go. She doesn't come and do all that stuff soon. I'm going to take that panel and do something with it. Speaking of panels, I actually bought another one. Some of you know, but some of you don't. I bought a, another wolf panel because, you know, me and my husband are obsessed with wolves. So I got another um, digitally printed wolf panel panel and it is amazingly awesome it's over on the shelf or else i'd go grab it and show you but it's in a the bag that it came in from online oh i didn't see you were there terry youtube to fix it. okay hold on hold on i'm lost where was i <clears throat> keep uh keep it might change your mind your kids Nothing your kids would want. I'm lucky. Nikki wants everything. I have your great grandmother's treadle machine, but it doesn't work. Wish you knew how to fix it. Try a YouTube video. Not much to them. Really love it. Um, my days are numbered as ALS is progressing, so I have to do something soon with it. A lot of sewing stuff. Oh, yeah. That's right, Pamela. What about werewolves? I just like regular wolves, not werewolves. I'll grab the panel right now and show you guys since all I'm really doing is sewing all this together. Let me grab it real quick and I'll show you. 
since my blocks sew together pretty darn quick. It's really, really nice. Oops, I'm dropping things as I'm grabbing it. I have to say, I like the other panel that I did Scott's quilt with, but this one is digitally printed and I'm not used to digital prints, but this is bright. So it's a wolf family. It's a long skinny one. And the daddy's wolf is howling at the moon. So I can't wait. I'm just gonna make this one a wall hanging from the little baby guy down at the bottom. I'm just gonna do this one as a wall hanging um, with purples, blues, and aquas and stuff like that, and then quilt it. And obviously I think I, I've gone overboard with wall hangings and stuff lately. No, I'm not normally a wall hanging and table runner kind of person, but it seems like that's all I'm getting stuff to make. <laughs> so, but I ordered that cause it was pretty cheap online and I haven't seen um, digital prints this cheap. So I just decided to go for it. And Scott said it was okay. And all I have to do is match up the backing, you know, the border fabrics for it and make it simple like I did behind me, you know. All right, row nine. Yes, it's very beautiful. And it even has pups. Yeah, it's the wolf family. So I, I really had to have it. It's one of those things, oh, you see it online and you have to have it. Someone had a peacock one too, and I saw and I really wanted it, but I don't have the money to buy two panels in one month. Well, I could, but I still have yet to order my black fabric. So until I order my black fabric, I'm trying to figure out which way I'm pressing right now. I forgot to draw my arrows. Until I order my black fabric, I kind of just am waiting on other little things because I'm out of black still, which I needed for the pattern I just wrote, but I'm going to do it without and see how it comes out. <clears throat> Yeah, a Siberian Husky. That's cool. Yeah, I love wolves too. I have, I even have one tattooed on me. I'm a wolf lover. We got wolf posters around the house and everything. Yep, we're wolf family. You guys know, little fact here, wolves mate for life. They're one of the animals that mate for life. So, and there we go. Finally ran out. Anal cancer. Wow, I've never heard of that before. That sucks. I always try to blow my bobbin casing out. Penguins do too. That's right. Exactly. All right. Oh, and when I come back, I always stitch about an inch above where it ended. Instead of back stitching, makes it easier for me. And I just clip away all those extra threads. I don't know if you guys do that. I don't, instead of back stitching, I just start about an inch above where I was. I had a cat that had feline A. What? Now that's one I have never heard of. Like I've heard of dog cancers, but feline AIDS? Like, is it like human AIDS? Like, I don't understand. Do they get all like weird crustified spots on them and develop welts and breathing problems and heart problems? I think people with AIDS develop all sorts of problems, like anything and everything that's just a problem. It's an autoimmune disease. So, I mean, that's got to be crazy to have an animal with AIDS. I've never even heard of an animal with hepatitis. I mean, it's kind of the same thought line, but animals don't do drugs, and a lot of hep B and C. My dad, my dad's hepatitis, so I think it's 
B or hepatitis A. One of the others from like needle sharing or something, and one's from something else, and one's from sexual. The one you're just born with. Has cancer. She's 13 years. Oh, yeah, I know that. Your rot has cancer. Um, 10 years ago. Oh, Pamela never heard of that either. Female or feline AIDS. That That's the strangest thing. I'm going to have to Google that because I have a cat. My cat better not get nothing weird and strange that I've never heard of. My cat right now suffers from I'm eight. So I want to be hyper as fuck when everyone's trying to sleep. Sorry for the language, guys. Yeah, He has been getting super duper annoying hyper lately. Like, just super annoying hyper. I don't know why. He's normally super lazy. But he's on a schedule. He's a cat with a schedule. And something is not right here. Oh, yeah, it is. Because I'm now on the opposite angle. <laughs> I'm thinking it's wrong, it's right. I'm starting to go in the downward position now because I did all the top rows. Since this is angled to the side a little bit, you know, I'm in the center now of the whole quilt top. There's so much thread on my floor. It has, I have little red threads and colorful threads from working last night in here making some sample blocks yeah he already got his haircut he got his haircut just to right before my ms attack he got his haircut and he was not happy so it wasn't um it wasn't uh i didn't get to do it as pretty as i normally do but it was it got done so that's all that counts <laughs> it got finished so he's he's trimmed up Okay, all that's going in the correct direction. It's coming together. All right, next row. I'm on row 10 now, guys. So in 4 to 10, I row 4 to row 10 so far in 30-something minutes. However long I've been on, 36 minutes. I can't see the screen that well, but I know there's a 3. Hi, Sandy. Welcome back. and scraps all over my floor yeah yeah this my carpet in here that's one thing about i do not suggest for people that have uh little quilt rooms like mine don't have carpet in it plus it's clogging up the vacuum which you know i mean in reality vacuums are supposed to vacuum it up but it get the if the thread is too long and i didn't get it off the floor you know then it clogs up the little vacuuming spinning part so annoying so yeah i don't recommend carpet i recommend like in my garage i can just sweep up all the thread just a nice hard tile or hardwood or concrete floor it's the easiest yes i did i sure as heck did teresa says going on <laughs> or going live just two words I did. I made sure I got that because I was talking to Michelle when I did it. Because I was talking to Michelle on video before we before I turned this on. But sorry you didn't see it. It's okay though. I'm just uh, what is the word for it? I'm just marathon sewing <laughs> over and over and chit chatting obviously. Gotta have the chit chat with you guys. <clears throat> Need a drink. Yeah, I, I bet Sandy. Yeah, in here we use the vacuum and just a hassle. Usually I go through or the the babies, well Triana will go through and clean up the the long threads or at least the noticeable ones so yeah but when i lay quilts out on the, um i don't uh i haven't been laying them on the floor anymore like the final quilts that take pictures and stuff so that they don't pick up as much thread 
I hung that clothesline from shelf to shelf so I can hang small quilts up to take pictures and stuff. And the final quilt won't have to go on the floor anymore. But every time I laid something out, and this got laid on the floor, so there's little red and black threads all over everything. It's covered in red and black thread. As long as I keep it away from the white. Oh, there's some blue thread right there. As long as I keep it away from white, the, behind the white fabric, then it should be okay. Before I quilt it, it'll be fine. I usually wipe it with a little, um, it's over there on my ironing board. It's a thing that picks up thread and stuff. Uh, oh my God, people use it on their clothes, the rolly one. Well, I don't use the rolly one, but I have it, a lint brush. I lint brush everything before I quilt it. That way nothing's inside the quilt. And I trim away any kind of, um, like this right here. If this piece of fabric got from another quilt that was on the floor, got in a thing, it would be a hassle cleaning this up or quilting it in under things. So I try my best to clean it up and keep it away from current projects. Oh, okay. I have to look to make sure I'm correct on this piece. It's not used to it going backwards now. Upside down. I will need to catch the rest tomorrow Eastern time. I have to take veggies to a friend who's getting ready to have surgery on her. Oh, yeah, yeah. Surgery on hands? That's got to suck. Well, good night. Get some sleep. I'm glad you joined. Thank you. It was nice chit chatting. Don't forget, this is every Sunday. Not this late, though. I usually only do one episode a Sunday, but sometimes if I don't finish something, I, I'll go a second time. But typically, it's just one video on Sundays. And then the rest of the week is just whenever I feel like coming on or when I can get a chance or you guys know how it works. So try mustard on care. No, I haven't. I should have said. Uh, yeah, I eat mine uncooked, too. No, Scott got the carrots out there. I had um, chicken uh, chicken and stars soup, you know, like you'd eat when you were a kid to get better. Chicken and stars. That's what I had. Chicken and stars and crackers while I was taking my quick break between videos. In a little while, when I'm done with all this sewing, then I'll sit in bed and eat my um, carrots and ranch dressing. But I will try the mustard. I definitely will try it. I mean, some things some people like and other people's don't, but I'm definitely going to try it. Hey, folks, how come 14 are watching and four thumbs up? Oh, yeah, don't forget the thumbs up, guys. <laughs> all right, row 11 time. I'm going to move all these closer now. but Not very many more to go. 18 rows to sew and I'm on number 11 and then I got to sew them together even though the first couple are started together first four or well not all hooked together there's two and then two hooked together but that part goes quick I usually add salt celery salt and sometimes seasoning Celery salt and sometimes seasoned salt to the mustard. Oh, okay. I have seasoned salt, but I don't have celery salt. I'm just going to put a dab of mustard from the container right on it, you know. That way it's a... Uh, I can at least say, oops... Oops, oops, oops. I had a machine eating hole, a hole eating thing. They decided to eat that seam. Every once in a while that happens. Uh-oh. Now it's a big knot right here. Oh, man. Come on. Come on. So when that happens and you get a big, huge knot, the best way to go about it is to, because now I have a big rat's nest right here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's a disaster. It just got stuck in the machine. I'm going to flip it upside down real quick and 
sew from the other end down when that happens. That way the bottom piece is a flat piece and not a um, lip. And make sure it's okay and it's fine. That's all I do when that happens. Sometimes it does that. Single hole machines usually don't. It's usually the elongated machine for zigzag stitch hole like my brother eats fabric. But sometimes a single hole needle machine will eat fabric. It'll just catch at that wrong position. Carrots and mustard and eat them the next day. The vinegar sort of softens the carrots a little. Really? I see you grabbed another subscriber. Congratulations. Since earlier's video? Did I grab another one since earlier's video? Huh. I will have, well, I can't say I have to look because I can't really see, obviously. Um, as I told you, my, my phone said one thing and the thingy said another. You guys said another. My phone was saying one a number and you guys said it said three uh 30 something my phone says two i don't know why it's getting stuck all of a sudden it's this little lip thing got a little clog in it ha ah. And I just realized there's two of the same color right kind of close to each other. But oh well. Oh well. I'm going to make it work. Hi, Linda. Your phone says 3.30. Okay, I'm going to check this while I'm on here. I'm going to reset the screen. Oh, it says 3.33. See, earlier it didn't say that. It said 328, and when I refreshed it, it didn't, it changed. That's crazy. Huh. Well, thank you to whoever just subscribed. Thank you to all of you who have subscribed and faithfully been my friends and family since. Since the beginning, before when I was in my garage doing nothing but sewing in darkness <laughs> and horrible angles on a horrible live stream because <laughs> I didn't have no other way to do things back then. I didn't know and I still don't know, but I'm trying. So what does everybody do when they can't sleep? Are you like me? I know because a lot of you guys are on the East Coast. Do you guys sew when you can't sleep? Or do you just watch videos online? Or do you uh, chat um, in like uh, on, like me and Michelle chat after like one in the morning in the middle of the night on Messenger? Do you guys do that kind of stuff with people? Or do you go and swim in a swimming pool or go out and lay on a trampoline and stare at the, the moon or something? Or do you just lay in bed and watch TV? What, what do you guys do when you can't sleep? I want to know. And for those of you watching later, put in the comments below. What do you do when you can't sleep? You're a quilter. I mean, there's got to be something you do when you can't sleep. Do you quilt? Do you sew, piece, design? Or watch TV? hang out with friends. I know some people get up and actually go to friends' houses who also have insomnia and can't sleep or are restless. So what do you guys all do? I sew, I swim, I watch TV. I do all sorts of things. I'm, I'm a multi-tasker. <laughs> Sometimes when I can't sleep, I only feel like sewing. Sometimes I can't sew because I'm too loud and I'm making too much noise and Lately, I can't quilt, so it's all about TV and videos lately. Let's see. Oh, reading. That's one thing, too. So Linda reads. Teresa watches videos online. 
Lacey lays in bed for hours trying to sleep and then gets up. That's me. I lay there and Scott says, try to sleep. I try. You guys don't understand. Nobody understands. We are really trying to sleep. We just lay there and lay there. We toss and turn and toss and turn. And I shake my legs a little and I, I wiggle my body and it just doesn't happen. So I get up and I either watch TV or I quilt. Quilting usually because I don't have to turn a TV on to distract my brain. So I'll just work with just this light and the above light. And I won't turn any other lights on. I keep it kind of, you know, still calm in here. But yeah. I definitely watch a lot of movies and TV as well, and videos. I'm a videoaholic for sure. All right, let's see. Sandy doesn't watch TV. Linda watches YouTube. Where did I say it? Where I was? Where? Sewing keeps you awake, really? Yeah, sewing hypers me up too, though. I, I love to sew. Vicky watches cow video and fall asleep. <laughs> Maybe you got to watch boring. I watch boring movies when I feel tired. I'll put something boring on, um, which is kind of weird because guess what kind of movies actually I fall asleep to? I don't fall asleep to any other movies, but action hero movies like uh, The Hulk or uh, Spider-Man, Superman, those kind of movies, you know, those are the ones I actually fall asleep to. Lots of action, lots of noise, but I fall asleep to them. Iron Man, you name it. Those action hero movies. Yeah. I don't know why. They just bore me. But I can sit and watch, well, we don't have Lifetime, but Lifetime style movies. I could sit and watch those for hours and not fall asleep. And they could be as boring as boring gets. And I don't fall asleep. It's kind of funny. Scott thinks it's weird, too, because he, like, Every once in a while, we'll get one of those co comic book movies. And yeah, I fall asleep to them. I actually stayed awake through Aquaman the other day, though. We watched Aquaman. And it was kind of one of those movies you don't want to watch when you get dizzy really easily. Don't watch it. <laughs> Not the kind of movie you want to watch when you have vertigo or eye problems. If the screen is moving too much, I'm like, no. Oh, and I'll turn my head down. <laughs> the mooing put you to sleep I like you're out in the country <laughs> they have videos that are not videos but like sound videos that you can watch on youtube and stuff for falling asleep i've tried them it's like soft easy music or flutes or the sound of crickets or the sound of the ocean water, things like that. I can't watch. I can't listen to those. They don't help me. I'm not that kind of get tired person. I know when I'm tired. I just my whole body just like says, "Okay, stop." <laughs> and the hyperness goes away. You can tell when I'm wide awake. I'm super hyper. You guys have noticed it in plenty of my videos. Dad had a mini farm, so you grew up with it. Oh, okay. How to make someone more boring. I try to read Bible boring enough to put me to sleep. <laughs> I can't read, unfortunately, guys. That's one thing. I mean, I can read, obviously, like a quick article in a newspaper or something. I mainly can read from my phone with the screen really dim. I do a lot of reading that way, but from a book, I can't do it anymore. I can't keep my eyes um, from going out of focus when reading a book. It's the weirdest thing that, and it does it with regular screens too. But with a book, I get I'll get frustrated because I'll get lost at where I am in the book when I have to move my eyes away. With a screen, um, I don't get lost because I can highlight where I'm at when my eyes start getting blurry or something. Or I can just turn it off and read it later. With a book, I'll get frustrated. I don't know why. But yeah, I. I have issues with books. Scott reads, though, but I don't. I mean, I do, but I don't. I'll quick reference something or read the kids a kid book with, you know, 15 pages of five words each page. <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> and that's quick. I try to, let's see, just turn on YouTube from... Lately, QLD in Australia, 2.45 p.m. here, beautiful, 25 Celsius day. It's in the middle of winter there. Really enjoy your shows and quilt chat. Why, thank you, Christine. 
Yep, sometimes I have insomniac hours for the American hour times for you guys to be able to watch on other countries daytime wise. So what is 25 degrees Celsius in um, regular degrees like we use? Um, is that like 65 degrees or something like that? I will back Genesis and Exodus skip the Leviticus numbers and Deuteronomy point towards Leviticus. Okay, Jack and Jill books. Yeah, those I can read. Just little easy word books. They, they don't, I mean, I still get my eyes. I read slower than I used to when I was younger, but I used to love to read. But until my eyes started messing up and having issues with my MS, it doesn't work as good. But welcome, welcome, welcome. It's nice to have you join and finally catch me in an hour that you're actually awake <laughs> and it's not night night time so it's when it's winter here or when it's summer here it's winter there huh in australia that's pretty crazy i'm not i've never been anywhere but here and i know that it rains a lot in like the uk or something but australia i don't i know where it kind of is but if i looked at a map then i would think but how is it winter? It's hot everywhere, especially here. I know it's south of the equator, so maybe that's why. Oh, one more block. I was getting ready to move this, and I realized there's one more block. <laughs> I almost got up. Six more rows to sew, and then I just got to sew the rows together, guys. This is looking really cool. I'm glad I moved a couple of them around for sure. Here, let me. So there's so far. I'm just laying them there. Obviously, I need to sew the rows together, but you can tell that I'm keeping them in order. Stay. Just checked it out. Seven, okay, 75 degrees. I can handle 75 degrees. I can't hand any, handle anything less than that. If I go to people's houses and then they keep their house at 72, I'm like, mm, give me a, give me a coat. <laughs> I don't like cold. Anything under, pretty much anything under 80, I can't stand. Anything above 80, I'm in heaven. So I'd probably do good in Hawaii because supposedly it's always 80 in Hawaii. Yep, it's looking good. Oops, which way is this? Okay, these are right. I'm trying to keep track of this back and forth. If it doesn't, it doesn't matter if it doesn't line up because either way I'm gonna nest each seam between each row, so. For a while now, I live in Land Laidley, Queensland. Okay, so you've been watching for a while, but you can't really ever catch the lives then, the live chats, because of the time difference. Well, I'm glad you are here, all of you. And I'm glad you guys are passing your surpassing your sleep times to hang out with me it feels like you're here with me hey diane welcome back i'm getting almost close to where i could sew all my rows together just gotta finish sewing these making the rows but i'm gonna go until they're done does working on a quilt from hell you have a sit down quilting machine by faf and you quilt for about a third of it and then it had to and had to take it why'd you have to take it all out what was wrong are you trying to do something specific to it i've done that on the long arm though. quilted and then it just didn't look right what the area that i got to and i picked 
the whole thing out. I've actually gone and picked a whole row out once. I quilted a whole row and said, no, this looks retarded. I'm changing my quilting up. Hey, Dewana, welcome back. I told y'all I'd be back on. You can't sleep. I'm here to hang out, which is kind of cool because, you know, I like hanging out with you guys. <laughs> I like the random chit chat as well. It reminds me of just having our own little personal quilt guild here. Chit chatting about life while making beautiful quilts. So much fun. You and he he hiding behind the door. <laughs> 16 watching, nine thumbs up. Hit those thumbs up, ladies. The thumb, blah, blah. Hit the thumbs up, ladies. <laughs> And again, like I always say throughout the videos every once in a while, don't forget down here, right there, that, that button, <laughs> that's subscribe. Hit that, and then the bell will come on. When that happens, choose the option to get notifications when I'm on, which is random and whenever, except for Sundays. Sundays is usually, I'm trying my best, guys, and I hope you've noticed, around 5 p.m. my time, between 5 and 6 p.m., somewhere in that range on Sundays, my early time to come on. That way it's like eight o'clock at the latest in like what, New Jersey and New York and those kind of states. That way everybody can still hang out and it not be too late on a weekday, or I mean on Sunday since tomorrow is Monday. But like it's only 9.54 here right now. So obviously it's not late for me. I know it's late for some of you, but. Come on when I come on and I'm always on at least an hour or longer. Don't forget to charge your devices. <laughs> I'm probably the only one I know that stays on this long. Well, I know a couple other live channels that I have a purple thread. Like, really? <laughs> I know there's a couple other channels that do really long lives, but they're like DIY projects, like building um, like wood and some of those that I watch. So I never saw anything wrong with a long video. It's like watching a TV episode or a movie, honestly. All right, next. Let me lay this down. Yep, this is looking really awesome. Really, really awesome. Next. Uh, let's see. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's see. Um, you've just finished a New York beauty quilt top for your husband. Wow. Just have to choose a backing and get it quilted. You're sending it out for quilting as you could not do it any justice. <laughs> I wish I could send a picture of it. Are you joined in the group in the description below? There's a group for you guys that are subscribed to my channel. Don't forget that also is another thing I usually tell you guys in the description below is the links to everything, especially to the group. You can post pictures in that group. It's a private group. So if it's gifts, you know, pictures of gift quilts and you don't want nobody else to see it's a private group. So no, none of your other friends will see it only us. So we can definitely give you our love and opinion on anything that you guys do. So don't forget you guys can post too. It's not just me. I like, I get inspiration from the things you guys post. Just remember that. And if anything, if you don't want to join the group, you can email me pictures of the projects that you do as well. I can send a picture of it. I'd love to see it. Let's see, it's 1254 there, Sandy. It's 1159 for Billy. You found eyelashes on the back. Oh, yeah, I, that's definitely something. That, there's like a lot on the quilt that I took pictures to show you guys in the group my personal bed quilt that I've been working on. You can tell the difference between sewing from this machine and when I did a lot of the stitching from the brother machine, you can tell the difference, the tension, absolutely off, 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 off. And you could tell back then when I was sewing too, how many more times I went back and forth and how tight my stitching was or how really far apart because I was going too fast. You can definitely tell the difference. Uh, 11.55 from Lacey, when you don't, know what to quote you just stitch in the ditch that's definitely something very simple to do 
emailed Sandy a picture, eyelashes, Linda, let's see. Kristen yeah, you can post it on the Facebook page. Yep. Definitely can post blah, blah, post on the Facebook group. That would be cool. I'd appreciate that. And let's see. Sandy, don't do Facebook. Rick does. Oh, hey, Sandy, uh, I did um, ask Rick to be my friend on Facebook. I don't know if uh, he told you. So that way you have a different way to contact me or he can show you my stuff that you don't get to see not doing Facebook and all you know. So don't forget to ask him if it went through. I'm not sure if it did or not. Doesn't say. I don't know how to know if it tells me if someone's my friend or not. But I did that. You know how to know that every single one of these pieces is correct? And, so, you know, if you think you've messed up, that throughout this whole entire row, each row is pretty much the same. What's happening here is it starts out with one top corner and then it creates a diamond. Here's another, a white area diamond and then a dark diamond. And then when I put this one on, it'll create a white diamond and so on and so forth throughout the row. So if it's doing that, then I'm pretty sure it's correct. Until I get to the middle and it switches to a different direction. Well, technically to the left or the right side of it because mine is right side to left. Well, unless it's flipped upside down, then it's left to right. But you get where I'm going. That's how I know they're correct. Color to color or white to white. He is looking for it now. Yeah, I added the other day. It should be in friend requests or something. I did it the day we were talking about it. right after when I got off the live feed to Facebook. I use, um, as you guys know, I use a lot of social media and that's how a lot of my customers have found me for, um, for long arm quilting or for custom quilts. Uh, they've all found me through social media. So I'm very, um, I try as much as I can to post as much as I can, but I'm very, um, try trying to be very good with my social media accounts i try to post as much the same things on instagram facebook and um the groups so that way anybody that only uses instagram can see it there anybody who only uses the group can see it there and the my personal facebook business page um you know where you can order to be able to get long arm quilting and or quilts that page um that can be viewed viewed and talked to even if you're not a Facebook user. That's the only page that is available with or without being a Facebook um, member. Instagram, though, I think you have to have an Instagram account. To use. But there's always email as well. All right, let's see. Common has moving your hands faster than the machine is running. But that... I have to add something to that one, Diane. Eyelashes are usually from the bottom if they're created. Like if you're moving too fast, you'll see them on the top and on the bottom. But if you're only getting them on the bottom, sometimes it's the bottom, the top tension because the bottom is being pulled up, not being pulled up enough, if that makes any sense. So you have to tighten the top up to get that bottom to pull equally. Um, sometimes it's actually the bobbin too. Uh, but bobbin is usually found on top, not bottom. But if it does, that's <clears throat> usually the opposite. But eyelashes are mainly from going too fast. But that's usually seen from the top. So and she was saying she had them on the bottom. So most likely it's a tension issue. If they're mainly eyelashes only on the bottom and the, the top looks crisp, clean. I had that trouble when I first got my long arm. You guys remember when I first got my long arm, I spent hours on tons and tons and tons of scrap fabric. I probably put, I don't know, 785,000 stitches just to get the tension correct. <laughs> That's a lot of stitching just for the tension. Because my machine already has over a million stitches already. That's That's quick, right? <laughs> I'm already at over a million and I've only had it for not even a full year in November it'll be a year oh wait I 
missed something. Let's see. Did Brandon eat all that shepherd's pie you made? Yes, we ate all the shepherd's pie. It was good. It was just right. Make a good funny. But it, it did make a good funny. Where am I at? Good funny video getting at. Cool. Yeah, I did it. He said that he couldn't find it and it will not let him send a friend request. Okay, I'll send another one. Hi, Diane. I'm back. Michelle, are you falling asleep? Or are you in your quote room? Um, hold on, let's see, what was wrong with the shepherd's pie, Christine, what part of the country, I didn't layer, just mix everything together and slept it in the oven, a video on it, hi Michelle, oh, more like shepherd's casserole, you know, these videos always turn to food, and I just ate my soup, but now you guys are making me want to go grab my carrots and ranch dressing, <laughs> I'm trying to get this done, though, and if I start eating carrots now, I'm going to even take more time. All right, row 15. Four more rows. Let's see if I can do this one without screwing anything up. And just get it done. Down. Three things you used. Okay, you guys chit-chatting amongst yourselves now about shepherd's pie. It's all Vicky's fault. <laughs> yeah, she's a, she's a foodie. She likes to make food. That's why I need to get you guys to come here and hang out with me for a week. You guys can all be my personal chefs because I don't cook. <laughs> I am super, super duper lazy when it comes to cooking. And especially since where we live, we can't use our oven. We have a galley kitchen. Uh, if you know what a galley kitchen is, it's a long, skinny kitchen. And where we live, we cannot use the oven in the summertime. We don't even have a water heater on. So it's living life with no water heater. And you can only shower after dark because the water is like 500 degrees from the cold side. So... Um, you know, we, we are in an area that requires a water heater and a water cooler <laughs> to live life. A water cooler for the summer and a water heater for the winter. So, uh, yeah, we can't use our stove or our oven and stove for long periods, like frying things, things that would cause a lot of heat to come off the stove. So we don't do much cooking over the summer. It's a lot of just whatever we can eat, you know, microwavable foods or sandwiches, you know, easy stuff. And when we do cook, it's simple things like making mac and cheese and spaghetti and Alfredo, pasta type stuff. It, it doesn't take long to cook. And yeah, so I need me people that will just come and cook for me because that would be amazing. Just come cook stuff for me. Yeah, ga this galley kitchen is the most horrible kitchen ever. Like, if we could knock a wall out and it'd be safe and look okay, we would. But the refrigerator is on the wall that would be knocked out and it would look dumb. Then we'd have to move that to a different wall, which there's no room for, and it would, wouldn't be an open kitchen. It's the only thing about this house is it doesn't have an open kitchen. Open kitchens are the best to be able to cook all year long. But we live where we live, so unfortunately we have to deal with it. So no oven stuff in the winter. I mean in the summer, only in the winter. And it's actually how we heat the house in the winter. We don't use the heater. We just turn the oven on in the evening, make like cookies or brownies or a cake or something in the oven, and then it keeps the house warm for the rest of the night. You live in 75 mile, 75 kilometers, which is what, 138 miles, 140, so, it's 100, so I had a car that was in kilometers. I'm turning my radio on for background sound because I think everyone in the house has gone to sleep. I don't hear any sound out there, so I don't want them to get woken by me chit-chatting. Plus, I, you guys will hear me sing here and there. And you guys can't hear the music, but I can. Let's see. We are used to live. If knock the 
used to live, if it would knock the wall out, it would be the bathroom. Really? Yeah. Can't do that. Here, our, our living room is next to the kitchen and dining room, but if we knock the wall out, it would begin to the living room. But it wouldn't help it any because it'd still be mostly galley kitchen. And we'd still have to have a place to put the stove and stuff, and it would be weird in the refrigerator because that's on the wall. This is the stove and the refrigerator. So it'd be shaped like an L, and then it would look really dumb. Yeah, some of these places, when they build houses, I guess they just don't think what it's going to be like in hot weather like where we live. The designer of this house should have thought about it. Just like the kitchen is on the back side of the house, which the sun hits all day long. Literally. That is the hottest side of the house, is that back side. All right. Another road done. Ugh. Look at that. Three more to go. Hello to have a look at a map to see where that is. Your best, the best subject in school. I used to hum while she said, I hum too, I'm a hummer. Scott always like says something like, cause I hum when I'm anxious, especially when I'm anxious, I hum. And yeah, or when I'm sad, I hum. And usually like when I'm long arming or something, I actually just sing. Like, I'll close that garage door and turn my music as loud as possible, and I get really loud. In here, I can't listen to loud music. The, so, the music goes just to a certain level, and then I have to, it's just to drown out the sound of the machine. But it's in a spot in my room that it's not as bothersome now for anybody else in the house. Like, when the machine was on that wall over there, CJ could hear it in his room, so it annoyed him, and I would never put it on that wall behind you guys, because um, Scott would hear it on his bed in the living room, so it's on the perfect wall right here, and it's not echoing out from underneath the door either, so that's good. <laughs> Crank up the music and sing. See you next time, ladies. It's after midnight, so you're going, okay, Pamela, we'll see you next time. Thank you for joining. Uh, let's see. Crank up the music and sing. <laughs> yeah, you guys don't want to hear my singing. It's horrible. I do it, though, but it's horrible. I used to sing good, but I have a really raspy voice. So it sounds funky. That's when she gets confused. She hums when she's confused. That's crazy. I think that's stupid. Builders in Texas always build houses with fireplaces. It's almost never cold enough for... There's fireplaces and homes here. Lots of them. Like, why? It makes no sense. The, the one I do understand is like a fire pit next to the pool out back. That way, in the wintertime, you can still swim in your pool and be warm next to your fire pit. If you think about it. But seriously, fireplaces in the house when we live in a town that is 100... 116 five months out of the year like seriously are they dumb <laughs> you know the rest of the time it's over 90 and it, the rest of the time it's over 80 you know i mean at least daytime temperatures we've gotten cold enough and we've snowed in the last couple of years but um it's rare very rare so for there to be fireplaces here it's the retarded it's a waste of space honestly like, you could put more things in a room, like another closet. You know how women, like us women, love closets to hide things in? <laughs> you know, instead of fireplaces, they should put closets. Or, uh, you know, linen cupboards or, you know, a pantry or whatever. Like, double-sided fireplaces? Those ones I don't understand in this area either. Why do you need two-sided fireplaces? Just build a, a partition wall or something, or don't have a wall at all. You know, I mean, I don't know. Makes no sense. Go from mom to sing. Uses the brain. Manage to post. The, you manage to post into the group. Oh, okay, cool, awesome. I'll go look at that, all that when I'm done. Obviously. Oops. 
Oops, I'm going the wrong. Which way am I supposed to be going? Oh, I am going right. Well, it does get cold and snowy in the panhandle. That was about where I was going to move. I told you about that, Diane, where we were going to move to in Texas. That place had a lot of fireplaces, but it also snowed there and got cold there. But it was also in an area that got tornadoes. <laughs> I didn't want to live in no area that got tornadoes. It's bad enough California's having earthquakes and it's going to fall off the earth soon. Ah, huh, Michelle. <laughs> Michelle's in California, guys, if you guys didn't remember. My mom lives at the epicenter of all those California earthquakes that just happened. So she definitely felt all that. I don't do disasters. I mean, I lived through earthquakes a lot growing up in California, but I don't do disaster no more. We have monsoons here, and that's as horrible as it gets. I mean, monsoons can be horrible for sure, but that's as bad as it gets, and that's nothing like a hurricane. It feels like it, but it's not. <laughs> Oh, wow. I'm going to have to go look at this, you guys. It's making me want to go look. Let me put this row down and get to the next two. And then we can sew them together. And then I can go play on Facebook. <laughs> you guys have the option to go look at everything while we're doing it. Billy gets tornadoes. Yikes. Not in Houston. It only snows about every 15 years. <laughs> yeah, Diane. Like I, it, Where we live, like I said, it only snowed twice in the last 40 years <laughs> it snows on the outskirts though around us everywhere just not here like last this last winter um kingman which is the an hour away from us got like 11 or 14 something like one of those two numbers of snow inches of snow i was surprised because i live i used to live there and yeah definitely thought that was kind of crazy that much snow Most of your curved seams worked out really well. Only had to unpick a few. So that, um, the one that you did, the New York Beauty, it kind of has, hold on, I'm going to pull this out only because I'm curious. So it has curved stuff like this, right? Where you have to create a big section for curves then on the New York Beauty, but it's half blocks, you, you know what I'm saying? Is it something that you have to do that with? Because this is for the Mariner Star, obviously. <laughs> I have it out because all these pieces are right here for working on it. But I remember I saw a picture of that. Um, so I was curious on that. Um, I'll go look on Facebook, though, when I'm finished here. And I will see what you guys are all seeing. Oh, these are left. I keep confusing myself on left or right. I just got to sew the la these last two rows together, and then I can sew the rows together. If that makes any sense. I got to stop taking my time. We get cyclones and where I live floods as well. 2011 and 2013, we had approximately, oops, it's going too fast four to five feet of water across your district. Wow. For a couple of days, you had lake views. That's crazy. We get flooding too. We get what we call flash flooding around here, but it goes away because it's a dry desert and it sucks it up pretty darn quick. And it all goes down to, into the lake. That's right. You would love to do Mariner's Compass too, maybe next year. You still have a couple of Christmas projects that you need to finish. <laughs> yeah. Just don't follow the book on the Mariner Star that I'm doing. I mean, you can follow my videos because there's a lot of mess ups now. Um, I point, I pointed out they wrote the book wrong. They wrote the directions wrong. And going through the book, it's all wrong. So I'm going to be the last part of everything is me making up it, uh, making the rest up as I go. Because it's all wrong. 
So you'll have to find a totally different pattern if you're going to be following a pattern to make sure it's correct. You'll definitely have to do that. <laughs> find something other than the book that I'm going from because it's all wrong. It's wrong. Unless I'm missing something or a dummy, it's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I have the videos, though, of the first... There's like six videos up with the Mariner Star. You guys can watch you can watch me make that. It's the general idea of it at least. I do mine with strip piecing. And then obviously little cutouts for the pieces to do all that circular stuff because there's a lot of angles and curves. As soon as I get to the next section on that video series, I'll uh, be able to post the um, pictures of what where I'm at. All the next steps of it is laying it out on the garage floor because I have to build as I go on the rest. Um, I have to take measurements and sizing and blah, 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 blah. And I got to make sure that it comes out correct because it's not going to line up at all. The book was wrong. It is not going to work. But I'm going to make it work because I'm pretty good at that. That's how I built my husband's quilt. I built around the panel, and I just went and measured everything I needed. I didn't even do really good measurements either. I kind of just eyeballed most of it. <laughs> but I made it work, and it laid really flat. This one I really want to lay flat, so I have to make sure I get the measurements after it. And plus, it's not for me. And I'll have the opportunity to take it to quilt shows also because they are vacationers. So... In between the time of the year that they're not vacationing at their home, I'll be able to steal the quilt for, you know, a month to go to quilt show with. I don't think it'll be this year's because I already have way too many that I'm probably being, that are probably being submitted, but we'll see. All right, one more row to sew together. And then... Well, if it's sew them all together. I think the colors came out really good, guys. They're really uh, flowy through here. I mean, in person, it's different than what you guys see on the video. They, they really, the colors are moving around pretty good through the quilt. And it's scrappy the way I like it. So I like controlled scrappy. So layer cakes and um, uh, charm squares and jelly rolls and honey buns and all those things that you can buy where all the colors are already pre-picked out actually helps with controlling the scrappy so it makes it so much easier to put something together and not have to pick anything but border fabric really and i already have that picked out oh let's see hold on you guys are saying something if it's right of a book Okay, you already got that. I already got that. Thanks for the heads up. I just got my pattern from Tobacco Shed Quilts. Hmm. Better than Earthquake. Never heard of them. Vicky, no way. Oh, yes. The way stuff put here. Just not motivated so much. I did think on Etsy, Pinterest is hard for me to manage. I'm not. I'm a tech idiot. Yeah, me too. <laughs> but that's cool. It's way different when you see it. When you get to where I don't want to quilt, I just start watching videos when I'm ready to go again. Oh, hey, Sandy, speaking of when you're watching videos and stuff, how's that star coming? I didn't get a chance to catch that next video yet. I actually really want to do that. That looks really cool. So I'm going to have to know those measurements. I, I really like that star. I think that would look really cool in the like the picture that popped up in the corner that you did to show what it's supposed to do. I have all sorts of those kind of colors. I would totally love to do that. Um, and solids as well. Because I like how that sits. It's, like a, it's built like a snail trail where the color has to be built around it where it goes to the next block. But differently like that's what i was seeing in my head just made really big into a star but i like the idea of it definitely so i'm going to make i want to make that obviously not right now because i have so many things going on but definitely in the future mm -hmm. 
Here we go. Here's a question that I'm not sure I asked. When you listen to music while quilting, what kind of music do you listen to? I listen to classic rock or old chant like old music channels, like what's on right now. Um, I listen to uh, 90s alternative rock and sometimes country um, just depends on the country music stars. <laughs> and then sometimes I get in a mood where I'll put um, dance music on, which you guys have probably seen my video a long time ago, Maxine catching me dancing to <laughs> hip hop music. <laughs> sometimes I'll listen to that. Just depends. It has to be old hip hop that I know, like that I know the words for. Because I like to make fun of the words and make my own words up because I'm weird. But yeah, what do you listen to when you are quilting? If you listen to the mute, if you listen to radio. Small, Billy, let's see. Billy, look for a small, easy project to get you going again, like a tote or a pillow. You try to do the picture as close as you could get it, but have to have but have help, and he does pretty good. Um, pretty good. Where am I? I listen to all kinds: heavy metal, techno, '80s dance, '90s alternative, just not country. <laughs> well, look at that. We do great hanging out together, Lacey. Definitely. You turn on some music and blast it. I la I literally, when I'm in my garage, I blast it really loud. Like my neighbors can hear it when I'm long arming. It's really loud. And most of my neighbors know what I'm out there doing because it gets loud. But yeah, I'm, I'm a loud, loud music listener when I do blast it. And if I have to do it in the house and I have to wear headphones, it's like, I don't want to listen to music then if I have to wear headphones. I just like it loud. I want to hear it not on my head, like, Headphones. Loud music, for, loud music for cleaning, definitely, Christine. We just got the babies starting to do dance party more often where we turn on loud music so that they can dance around the house. And uh, yeah, it's pretty fun. And they clean up their toys or they just dance around. I used to do it with my kids all the time. Diane is old country music or 70s to 80s rock. Um, Sandy, would you like me to? Yeah, email that picture. I want to see how it goes. Since it only comes up on the video for a few seconds, you know. your teeth on country music i like listening to you now to to you now to uctv or the midnight ride david crackle there's more teresa's country okay billy let's get to sewing all right last row i'm going to show you guys i'm going to use that the the bazillion people eye if you catch anything wrong tell me now i'm going to turn the camera now if you see something that's wrong, before I sew them together, you guys see anything wrong? I don't. Obviously, the rows need to be sewn together. They're kind of sitting to the side, but I'm like looking at the screen, seeing if I see something different. All right, I'm going to start sewing them together, though. But that's where it's at so far. I'm going to tip the camera up. Do you see that corner? down to see this corner it looks right to me to the screen all right let's sew these rows together now guys so much to sew. let's see i can't see all the comments just yet i've walked away from the screen so i sewed these two i'm going to start sewing the groups together and just sewing each row on <clears throat> ouch that hurt oh I just hit my knee, like your funny bone, but on my knee on the table. All right. Need to get. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I 
I have a lot of things that I started. I have a lot of started projects, which I, I got to start getting done as well, guys. But I just haven't done it yet. I want to get all my new projects done because I'm thinking new, fun, exciting, you know. My old projects are like boring, blah, dull, but they're like super old. And I didn't know what I was doing, so it was learning Learn as I go, and now that I know, I, I'm like looking at them going, I really put that together. <laughs> so, yeah, I haven't finished a lot of my projects, and I should. I should get them done. But I like getting these projects done because they're fun. Because <laughs> they all line up and they look good. In the beginning, I used a lot of sheets, a lot of sheets. I cut up so many sheets in the beginning. Oh, my phone is telling me to hook it to the charger. All right. Okay, Teresa. Let me know if you don't get it. I'll just say, okay, yeah, Sandy, it came through. It notified me. All right, good night, Teresa. We'll talk later, okay? Get some sleep. All right, I'm going to sew the rest of these rows together now, guys, and then I will give it a quick press, like an overall just crap press real quick, and then hold it up and be done. Everything's lining up really nice, so this doesn't take too long. Except for the fact that it's catching all the little pieces of fabric. Trying to make sure I nest my seam. But it's coming out, so far it's 56 inches wide, and it should be 72 inches long. And that's the four borders. So that's four charm packs, two and a half yards of fabric and this is what's happening so i'm going to just lay this here i'm going to grab the next row and attach it so this is row five i'm going to just try to back off a little just sew from the edge that way i can get up and down faster all right. Oops, we got a seam that's kind of a runaway seam. There we go. It's also good to keep things on your lap. If it hangs off, it's going to stretch it a little from being under the needle. So it's good to have stuff that you're doing on your lap. I also like to make sure that some seams fold nicely and the, they go under the presser foot. They all should be pressed opposite ways. They should go pretty darn quick. Uh, haven't you sheets? Or you use sheets for backing most of the time. Fabric in Australia is very expensive. You usually start $17. A meter is a yard, right? Um, more often it's over $20 some cheaper. What about ordering from America, American companies? Is it cheaper or does it cost more in shipping, which makes it the same price as or buying it at a fabric store there? That's got to be hard. Unless you know somebody in the U.S. to buy things and then ship it to you, I guess. Or if you get free shipping on orders over whatever. I guess that would work, right? Sorry, I hear something funny. Grab the next row. 
I should just put a couple rows up here so I don't have to keep getting up and down. Stay. Row six. longer than a yard. Should be quotes, I think. Years longer than a yard. Wow, that's expensive. We're blessed to pay what we do. Yes, we are, definitely. Do you have Walmarts there? Out of curiosity? I, I mean, I don't know if Walmart is in other countries because Taco Bell is in other countries and McDonald's is in other countries. So I'm curious if Walmart is in other countries or the ability to order on walmart.com maybe. I'm trying to watch the time that I'm on. You guys know I'm pretty quick. So to have a quote done and from putting it, you know, it took me like, what? I don't know, two hours to... Put all the half square triangles together. Um, and then it took the last hour was the last about, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour to trim all the pieces. And then the last video was two hours long to design layout. And then this video will probably end up at two hours as well. So that's two, four, six, pretty much seven hours total on this quilt. So, I mean, I guess that's pretty quick. It could be done in a day. I'm just trying to see, like, you know, for you guys to how long, if it could be done in a day for anybody else. Long arming part would be quick. General quilting on, you know, free motion quilting on a sit down machine would probably be the part that would take a long time. But as Midnight Quilt Show makes it seem like that you can, you know, up all night or her version, she makes it seem like you can get it done in like two hours, a whole queen size quilt, uh, you know, free motion quilting, which is impossible. Not even I can quilt that much <laughs> like that. So only on the long arm, but sitting down on a domestic machine, it don't work that way. They just make it seem like that, but this could be done in one complete day if you have a long arm or a long armor that would do it for you. Mom, pop, quilt. Yeah, I watched that too, Sandy. I watched Mom Pop Quilt Shop. I was just on the other day. Walmart in Arkansas. Seen Diane. It's a meter is a bit longer than a yard, about six inches you think from memory. I learned from mom and pop quilting because they're in Canada and they do long arming. Yep, they're in Canada. Well, fabric is expensive in Canada too compared to American prices. I've learned that one as well from another friend who is in Canada. She was saying she can't get jelly rolls and layer cakes for the price that we get them for. So they go down into Michigan and or like what's uh, trying to think of the states, Wisconsin and things that are along the border and um, Colorado and so on. They try, they go, you know, depending on where they live in Canada, they go down into the states to buy their fabric and then they just drive it home. So that way they can pay American price. Even though I still think it's kind of expensive here. Obviously. All right. 
Laurel Lynn is funny. Yes, Laurel Lynn is definitely funny. Definitely, definitely. See what they do. Okay, here's an idea of what my whole channel thing is supposed to be like. What they do with that multi camera switch. So when Laura Lynn is at the ironing board and they have their camera on that, or when she's at the machine and they have the front angle, or when she's cutting and they have the front and you can see her whole thing, that's what my video is supposed to do. The program that runs it is supposed to do that. But my internet doesn't run it if that makes any sense. I can run the program all I want and switch cameras with a button constantly. The thing is, is it's kind of hard doing it myself for one. When you have help, it's easier. But for two, my internet doesn't support it. And there is no internet service around this whole area that has fast enough internet for me to do that program. Which sucks. But that was the goal of how I was going to do my channel. You just press a button, or use my mouse and switch from camera to camera for you guys. Until my area has a better internet service provider or switches completely to fiber optics, we can't have that kind of program. So you guys are basically stuck unless I make start making and editing videos and learn how to do it good enough. You guys are stuck with my lives from however angle I do it from. I'm trying my best to come up with ways to sit in this room for you guys to see better, you know? But so far I've been told since you guys have been on that this video quality is actually good. So that's a plus. I might just use it this way more often. Because I can bring the laptop even closer for you guys to see. I just have to deal with the wiggling, but I can bring it closer for you to see. I don't know how to zoom, though. But I can move it. If I needed to. I'm trying though. I'm trying to make it good. It doesn't matter if you edit or not. We like this with talk to you in real time. Yeah, I like the real time talk to you, Sandy. I much prefer it this way. And since I don't have a lot of subscribers, you know, it makes it more personal for me um, to hang out with you guys. I don't. You know, when it becomes a lot of subscribers, it's going to be hard to have my normal conversations with you guys. I know, and I'm not trying to defer anybody from subscribing, but I definitely like the close and personalness of having you guys here. And I love my new subscribers joining. It's always great. I'm wiggling this table really bad now. See, I, I sing and I don't need you guys can't. You're like, uh, shut up now, Tiffany. My singing is horrible. Why wave? Okay, hold on, hold on. Let's see if there's anything like mine. Zoom in and out and use your volume button. No, not on my laptop. The laptop is way different, Sandy. CJ might know how to use it, though. Oh, I'm in the middle now. Everything's changing directions. I'm like, what? This is not lining up right. <laughs> See, the thing about this table of why you guys now see why I want a longer table. I'm trying to keep everything on the table. And it's not wanting to stay. I just died on your own wants to get you a laptop so you well then get one that you can go tell him, rick to look okay sandy tell rick to look on marketplace on facebook uh he, he'll know what i'm talking about and go on there and find someone local who is selling a cheap refurbished even used laptop and buy one you can get one for under a hundred dollars which is really really cheap or you just go to walmart and get a Cheapy, like, Asus, I think they're called. They're the cheapest ones that Walmart sells. A-S-U-S or A-C-U-S. or I don't know what it's called, but, um, yeah. My daughter gave me mine, but I see laptops all the time on Marketplace. It's one thing that does sell. you got to make sure it works, though, before you buy it. Don't just buy any old willy-nilly one, but definitely get one that works. And, uh, yeah, just start doing live streams again. I'm glad I had 
the laptop to be able to do live streams with that whole stupid you have to have a thousand subscriber thing my channel would be nothing anymore you guys so be glad that i had a laptop for my daughter because <laughs> i can't do anything from my phone or tablet until i get to a thousand and i'm a long way from a thousand so a long way but you know you guys can share that video of my layer cake madness in quilting groups if you want maybe that'll bring my subscribers up and then i can start going to different things and you know different devices but it works from the laptop just make sure sandy though that you they make you guys make sure it works that's definitely the easiest way the last we got one for Scott, his laptop. His laptop was bought from Marketplace on the internet, on Facebook. And it works great. I don't know where Alexa got hers, the one that she gave me, but um, it was used as well. I don't think she bought it brand new. I know she bought it used, I think, for school originally. All right, next row. I'm not even finger pressing these rows, guys, if you can see. Just trying to sew them on. They line right up every time, so that's a plus. Cool. Uh, let's see, hold on. You started something. Okay, that would be cool for me. Cool, Rick, go for it. You're not horrible. I have heard horrible, so I know. <laughs> I'll look into it. Wow, you look. Scott singing is horrible. You guys don't want to hear Scott sing. It's annoying. Yeah. He knows that too, and I tell him, but he's like, I don't care. I'm like, please stop. Please stop. Ah, you're killing my ears. Look into it. Wow, you rock, Mr. I just saw your quilts. Poor men sewing. Well, we will go to the computer people here and we go and get one from him. Yeah, you can do that even. Go to a computer shop and get a used computer. Oh, just so you guys know, I don't backstitch up each of these rows either because this quilt is not going to get moved around much, if that makes any sense, before I get a border on it. The first border is going to go on. I'm going to do a white two and a half inch border first, a stopping border. So technically, if I don't need to backstitch because everything's going to get stitched closed anyway. Just letting you guys know. Some of you like get worried that the stitches is going to fall out or something if you don't backstitch, but technically it's getting a border real quick after I show you guys, it's going to get a border. So there's no need to backstitch because all these edge seams are going to get closed off anyway. Just letting you know. Sometimes I have to clarify things just in case you guys were wondering, because I know some of you think these things and I want to make sure the beginners know you don't always have to backstitch. So especially for those who are beginners and you have any questions, yeah. Yeah, it's so much easier, Sam. You don't have to use the computer for anything else but to do your live streams like I do. So much easier. And since you're not at a thousand either, it makes sense, you know, if you want to be able to chit chat with everybody again, it's definitely a a good thing to invest in a laptop. I mean you're getting there anyway, so and you could probably use it for video editing. I have this stuff on here to edit videos. I just don't get it. And I can't get rid of the watermark. Because I told you already, video editing from a computer is different software than tablets and stuff. You actually have to pay for it. Or else it has watermarks. It's the only difference between the laptop or, you know, between a laptop computer and a cell phone or um, iPads or uh, Android tablets different programs just lining all these seams up as I go I got eight more rows to sew on trying to go quick I'm just making sure my seams nest. You guys know that obviously this is going to be a for sale quilt. So I do have to make sure, even though I'm going fast, I still have to make sure I nest seams and everything. I don't want it looking too ridiculous. I don't want it to look like a 10-year-old, did it? <laughs> I want it to look like a professional. 
sort of, you know, obviously a lot of these quilts that they're not on my Etsy shop, but a lot of the quilts you guys that I make for these videos are definitely all for sale quilts. If you guys know anyone that's interested, they're all for sale. So if you've seen something I've made and you're interested in it, or you know someone that would be, just let me know and I'll tell you if I still have it or not. Because they get start to, start to finish by me. See these strings right here? You can see me pulling on it with my black shirt in the background. This is what happened from those two blocks I bet that I had to, that I sewed while doing that whole not cutting from the machine showing you guys the piece came through. So far, that's the only two I've seen. So it's definitely probably the block that I didn't cut. <clears throat> It's growing. This thing is going to be pretty big. I'm almost at two hours. I'm probably going to go over two hours on this, guys. So make sure your phones are charged. And for anybody watching this later, we're coming in on the two-hour mark. I definitely do want to press it real quick though before I hold it up because it's not really laying that flat because I haven't been finger pressing, which I should have been, but obviously I'm not. I'm just kind of throwing it together. Like I said, I am making sure my points line up. I think it's going to be really, really nice. Really nice. Uh, four different purple fabrics so far. Oh, wait. Well, I must have lost something. I like that, Tiffany. I'm going to do an eight-inch Dresden. Oh, you're going to do the purple Dresden plate then, huh, Vicki? That ought to be cute. Dresden plates are so fun to make. I know I gave a lot of you ideas by making it the way I did. <laughs> With the purple, it re really looks good. Like, I can't wait to finish that one and hang that one up on the wall. Because that one definitely looks really awesome. I got to finish by putting that applique in the middle. But you guys will see when I finally get it done. I just haven't had time. I've been trying to get all these other projects situated and I had to be able to my customer came over to see the progress of her quilt she had been in a coma for four months so she didn't know where I was or what I was doing I mean she did wake up realizing that she'd been a, gone for three months you know so or for four months so she uh, got to see the progress and is absolutely amazed but yeah she's uh, in a wheelchair now so because she has to learn to walk and stuff again, obviously. But that's why I'm trying to, like, rush her quilt in a way. But I want it correct. So, I definitely uh, been spending more time on that one than anything else. But I did want to finish this because you guys saw me make the half square triangles. And I know you guys are probably wondering, what happened to those half square triangles she made? Are we ever going to see those again? So, obviously, I had to get back to it. I don't like letting things sit either. It racks my brain. Like, hmm, what am I going to do with those half square triangles, you know? I didn't want to have to think about it forever, so. Okay, four different purples. That sounds pretty. Why don't you just list them on Etsy? Well, I haven't got a chance to take pictures, nice pictures of everything. Like, you guys see the pictures that I post. They're not really that. I'm trying to post pictures for my Etsy shop that are more... Um, that catch the eye and say, oh my God, that quilt is so beautiful and it have a nice background instead of sitting on the rock out in the gravel of my rock gravel yard, <laughs> which kind of is tacky and then laying it on the floor in my living room also looks tacky. 
I don't know. To me, it doesn't catch the eye, and that's probably why I didn't have very many visitors to my Etsy shop. So when I get a chance to go through all the quilts that I have and start listing them again, relist all my, I want to take all new pictures. Because there's over, I don't know, probably at least 30 quilts that I need to list. I got lots of quilts, guys. Lots of them. Hoping to put granddaughter art in it. Oh, that would be nice, Vicky. I don't have grandkids, so I don't have to worry about putting their art in the middle of anything. <laughs> Thank you, Diane. Hope so. What are you making, Vicky? Quilt for your grandkids. I love the purple, pinks, and greens together. Um, hanging on a quilt. My clothesline faces like a bunch of kids' toys and a slide and all sorts of just junk in the background. It looks tacky as well. You know, I don't know. I just. I was thinking of taking pictures like at somebody's house. So if, if I know somebody locally that has a really, really, really super duper clean house and a fancy, nice, pretty bedroom with a big, nice, fancy bed, take pictures over at their house. <laughs> you know, just take all of my pictures over or all my quilts over there and just take a ton of pictures all on one day because my background in my bedroom has the marry me on the wall, which I mean, obviously it means something, but it's kind of tacky when someone sees spray painting on the back of a wall when they're trying to look at a beautiful quilt. The only thing you see is the wall. So, and if I move my room around, it doesn't work. So, and CJ's room is, his bed's on the floor and there's cribs and toys and shit in the background. So, excuse my language. So it's kind of tacky in there. I mean, my house is clean and stuff. I could probably put one on the couch, but... I don't know if I want everyone in the Etsy shop that sees things and scrolls to those seeing my family pictures on the background behind something visually, you know, it just, I need a good plain, but clean background to take nice pictures, or as nice as I can get at least. So I need a friend that has like a mansion or something. I can go over to their house and use one of their spare rooms <laughs> that nobody uses just to take pictures of my quilts. Quilt selfies. <laughs> All right. Five more to sew on. Five more. Almost done, guys. Like I said, I'm going to put a two and a half inch white border, a stopping border. And then I'm going to, I'll show you guys the fabric I think I'm going to put. It was for another quilt, but it's going to go on this instead because it actually doesn't match. I have to buy some, something else for the other quilt. Because the fabric line didn't match up. The camera, the picture on the internet was totally different than the picture went, or the than the fabric when it finally came. That's the only reason why I don't like buying online because I can't see it in person. But the prints didn't look good together. So I'm going to use it in this because it actually matches this. Sewing without bobbing again. And I didn't roll any. So let's choose a color that's not bright. Light gray? No. Off white. I guess I'll finish off the rest of some of these from other quilting projects. I'm a thread matcher all the way, guys. I like to match my thread to my projects, especially when quilting. We're all, let's see, sounds fun, I want to do a little cabin for a friend, and I'm going to do Western Australia, there's a family of seven of you, I'm going to try to read and sew so I get this done fast, sounds good, sounds like fun, awesome, Vicki, well, Christine, that's going to be, going to be fun as family. Uh, well, aren't we glad houses are not shrines? <laughs> it would look fantastic. Sandy, Danny, our, Sandy and our, Diana, our oldest son looks at the wife, too. We moved back to Queensland 10, 10 years ago in November. Uh, sorry, that was Michelle. Make a quilt cover up the wall for taking pictures. 
the other thing I know about taking pictures in my room is like my um, pill jar or, or I keep all my medicines, my MFN stuff and my daily meds. That all sits on my nightstand and stuff. I'd have to move everything out of the way. I mean, I have a really nice bedroom set and stuff and the nice chair, wingback chairs in my room and stuff. I mean, it's nice background, but I'd have to clean all my, what I call my throw. I throw everything to somewhere and leave it, you know. I'd have to clean all that up and stuff. It'd just be a hassle. The main thing is covering the wall, which soon I'm going to have a quote hanging on the wall. I just don't know if it's going to be right there or not. Because the husband also has to, you know, say, okay, that looks good, you know? Because that purple, that Dresden is going on the wall in my room. So I have to, that's the wall I want to put it on. <coughs> I'm still not done reading the comments. Give me a second to grab another row. I'm like really close to me now. Okay, where was I? Is the border fabric the same charm packs that you use? No, it's just something that matches the browns that are in here. It's a flower, brown flower print with light brown and dark brown, just like all the prints that are already in here. It kind of just blends right with it. So I'm just going to put it with, because I don't have any blues that I can think of around here that would go with it or pale greens. And I don't really want to use solid on this one as the second border. I was thinking this one would do a lot better with a print. Usually I do solids though. I'm a very... I'm really into solids in my borders because I like to use the quilting to highlight the fact that the border is solid, if that makes any sense. Spiders, grasshoppers, big giant ones and small ones, just regular garden ones. You usually like the dead ones and they get to uh, you see, you can find the stalks of banana and throw them in the corner of the house. They'll go away. Mosquitoes as big as thumbnail. They hurt when they sting. They are not all that big, but the regular ones. You guys have mosquitoes that big? Ew. Yeah, I get bit by bugs really easily, if you guys didn't know. I have bug bites all over me. Michelle knows, because she knows that I get bit all the time, but I... I am highly susceptible to bug bites of all kinds. Spiders, we don't get mosquitoes much around here. Unless I swim in the pool at night, then I get mosquitoes. But other than that, they're not out there during the day. It's too hot. Um, but we get these little weird black... I still have yet to figure them out. I was talking about it in a previous video. They look like ticks. They fly like fleas. They, they're weird. I don't know what they are. I googled every image possible. I did a reverse image search and everything. I don't know what these bugs are. I thought that they were um, dirt fle dirt flies or sand flies or whatever. They're not that either. But they bite and they hurt and they cause welts. And I have them all over my legs, on um, my stomach, on my sides. I even got one under my boob somehow. I think that was a spider, honestly, the one under my boob, but... I don't know why. I get them on my feet, on my ankles, on my toes. You know how hard it is to have a bug bite on your toes? That shit itch stuff. That stuff itches really bad. <laughs> Sorry. My cussing gets a little bit more than it's supposed to at night, but I don't think sh shit is a really bad word. I don't know. Some people are offended by it, so I got to watch my mouth. Yeah, we get weird bugs here. Then we have the, you know, scorpions and centipedes and camel spiders, things like that. They all bite. I don't know what happens if you get bit by a centipede, though. I do know from scorpions and stuff you got to go to the hospital for, but I don't know what happens if you get bit by a centipede. Probably the same thing. Super itchy. Hives, maybe. I don't know. You 
have a major pot. Yeah, I do normally. <laughs> normally. I try not to. It's so hard, but. I'm also not just a potty mouth. I'm a gutter mouth. Like, um, I don't know how to explain it. I'm, I'm a dirty talker. I talk dirty. I turn things into sexual rude comments and stuff. If I told you guys, you guys would be like, what the hell? You're crazy. So I'm going to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> and my computer is talking to me again. I don't know what it's trying to say. I just don't want it to kick you guys off. As long as it's still on. Okay. Two more. Two more, guys. After this one, I'm going to plug the iron in and I have to put my other ironing board out because this one is not going to... I can't iron this whole thing on that little, that little space on my big board. Like I'm telling you, if the whole quilt project for the Mariner the Star is on there. On the ironing board. Okay, see how this is happening right now? How it's falling off the table? This is why you got to keep it on the table. It just pulled that seam over like an eighth of an inch. I'm not going to worry about it because it's probably going to lay nice and flat in a second. I'm just going to like go over it real quick. But you need to keep the quilt tops on a table or else it's going to yank it down because all this fabric starts getting super heavy. All right, there we go. Okay. It just pulled from the underside, so it yanked it, and it's not right. So you got to make sure you watch that because it can really throw off the, um, the size of things. Just thought I'd let you guys know that. That's why we say all the time to keep your quilt on the table or have a big enough table for the size quilt you're making, at least, you know? Especially doing rows like this. You definitely want it to be right. Yes, I agree to extend. Okay, where we go? You have a major party mouth. Sometimes you do, Sandy. He said, Christine, you too. It's great. And yours is probably in a heavy accent too, huh, Christine? <laughs> I love accents. I'm highly, highly, uh, what's the word for it? Um, not attracted to, but the, the sound of it, it makes me feel comforted when someone has a really, really strong accent, even if their accent is uh, just even American Southern, you know, or um, a New York accent, or, you know, I have a thing for accents because I don't have one. I just talk regular. <laughs> And usually I can tell when someone's from a specific country by their accent. Maxine's friend, she has a friend that's from the UK. And he's, um, he speaks French and he, his accent changes a little when he speaks French. But he actually grew up in, in Britain. So he has more of a stronger fluid Britain accent. But he, British accent. Why did I say Britain accent? But you know what I'm saying. And... But if he starts speaking French, you can tell he, it sounds like a French person instead, even though it's all the same country. You know, he, you can tell. It's, it's kind of weird. All right, I'm going to plug my iron and throw my other ironing board out because I just have one more row to sew. Make this quick, guys. One more row. Get it on there. And there's just a little bit more water into the iron, so there's plenty of steam, so that it presses really quickly, like. And as soon as I get off of here, finally, I can go potty, because I went before I got on, but another two hours of not going, I really got to pee. <laughs> like, a lot. I pee a lot, though, during the day. All right, where are we? I can't believe so many of us are up late tonight. Obviously, you guys got to be on. Hang out with me. Do you like the first border to be solid too, Diane? Next border, big print to match the fabrics in the quilt. And if that isn't around, then solid's all the way. 
Can't believe you're up so late. We love Tiffany. It's worth being up late. Just an Aussie accent. Um, when you get old, it's harder to get to sleep. Oh, don't tell me that, Diane. Okay. <sighs> I already have a hard enough time falling asleep. I don't need it to be any harder. On a regular average day, when I do sleep, it takes me, and we've timed this before, it takes me about an hour and 35 minutes to fall asleep. Just to fall asleep. Just laying there in the dark, eyes closed, doing everything you can, not thinking about anything, just counting sheep. It takes me about an hour and 45 minutes. Can you believe that? That's a long time. A long time to fall asleep. And then when I do fall asleep, I have problems. Like last night I had nightmares in the middle of the night. Um, I was screaming in my sleep, Scott said, so he came in, he tries to shush and calm me instead of waking me, and I had earplugs in, so he couldn't wake me anyway, because I had earplugs in, <laughs> and, uh, I was nightmaring, and he just comes in to comfort me, to shush me, and he'll rub his hand on my chest, or, you know, like, pet my hair, or hold my hand, so I didn't sleep very well last night, and that can last for hours in my sleep, so I barely get any sleep because of the severe nightmares. And I don't know why I still have nightmares to this day, but I do. And it's the kind that I squirm around in bed and scream to the top of my lungs, or I talk. I have talking nightmares as well, where I talk to nobody or nothing. It's pretty crazy. But yeah, um, it takes me a long time. So I don't want to hear that it's harder when you get older because if I can't sleep now, I, don't, I can only imagine what it's going to be like when I'm 60, 70. I'm not going to want to live. I'm going to just stay awake all the time. I'll have to find more than just doing quilting as a hobby. <gasps> I'm going to need more hobbies. too much pain yeah I, too much pain that's my problem is pain and the shakes the shakes prevent me from sleeping too sleep all the time too much pain to sandy mom sing get her singing for her brain texas x i know that diane we've talked all right i'm taking my pins out real quick because i don't want to iron with these in so it's going to take me a minute to get all my little pins out um, I'll read these comments. It's so much faster than it takes me to fall asleep. Really? It takes a long seat. I just, I don't know. Whatever. You guys are making me not want to get older. It's going to take longer. Uh, Mom, don't sing that much. It makes me forever to sleep, but Rick, he can. She closes his eyes and he's got, yeah, same with Scott. His eyes are closed and he's out like a light. He can sleep like three naps a day if you let him. He just falls right to sleep. But he can stay awake watching movies and stuff. He's tried to do some insomniac days with me, but he can't. But he's tried, at least. My problem is, is the insomnia keeps me up for days at a time. And when I finally do crash, I have a hard time crashing. And then I have a hard time getting up the next day because I crashed so hard, I guess, if, the, if that's how you say it. You talk in your sleep. Your husband falls asleep within five minutes and sleeps. Yeah, mine can sleep in a car. I can't sleep in a car. I've tried. I tried to sleep on the ambulance. Couldn't do that. Yeah, I've tried sleeping in weird ways and positions. I tried sleeping in a car with the car not running, just off and in a parking lot at a rest area, and I couldn't even do that. So I just said, screw it. I'm going to drive. You can sleep while I drive. I'm sorry to hear about your sleep because I sleep. Go into a coma, wake up in the morning. Older than you. You're not much older than me, uh, Lacey. You're seeing your lucky duck to be able to wish. Good. All right, guys, I'm going to iron this now. I'm going to leave the comments here for a second, but I'm going to turn the screen so you can watch me press. I'm just going to do a top press. Just going to keep the seams open. Lots of steam. And this is another reason why I hate these ironing boards. Because they don't hold my quilt up nicely. I have to hold my body against it. 
<laughs> so annoying. So annoying. <laughs> I usually try to do all one side and then flip it and do all the other side. But I got to get it started first. <laughs> And I'm just rolling over the seams. It just opens them all up. Just a quick press, guys. And then we'll hold it up so you can see. It doesn't help that the cord actually comes out the wrong side of the iron. <laughs> I love this iron and all, but the cord goes the wrong way. Should come out this side so that it doesn't get tangled underneath me. Almost. I just want it flat enough to hold it up for you guys. I'm not caring if the seams go one way or the other. I'm just going to let them go the way they want to go, which will help with the long arming process. I don't know if you guys know that, but um, if the seams go, like, especially because there's a lot of bulk in the seams on this, if they just go the way they want to go or the way they're just naturally laying, it keeps it more flat. So I'm just going to let them go the way they want to go. All right, other side real quick, and it'll be done. As long as the seam is open, that's all that matters. But it prevents from the grabbing when you go over the seam, that grab that you get when you're quilting. You don't want that. So if you just, like, go over it nicely and just make sure that the seams are all open and there's no folds, then it works out pretty darn good. Mistini is not very McSteeny tonight. And it's got lots of water in it, too. I don't iron much because my arm is hurting. <laughs> Funny. I'm like feeling it. It's like a workout here, guys. I guess if you want to build some arm muscle, get the ironing. And I'm not worrying about going with the seam or whatever, or with the grain of fabric or anything like that, like some people teach. I'm just making sure that the seams are open, you know? Nice and flat. That's all I care about. There we go. All right. You see the whole thing? It's being, I'm trying to hold it all the way up to the, so it's actually really tall, guys. It's taller than me. I'm going to measure it right now. That way I can tell you how big it is without border. I'll turn the camera down so that you guys can see. That way you could stare at it. Stare away. It is. Let's see. I met, I said it was going to be 56 by 72 without borders. So it is 72 and a half. Ooh, I was off by a little bit on that. By half an inch. 
and 56 and a half. So it's 56 and a half by 72 and a half since I ironed it before my last measurement. So I was a half inch off both. So 56 and a half, 72 and a half. I'm going to turn this back up and I'm going to stand as far back as I can and hold it up one more time. So you guys can see it's pretty tall. It'll fit a twin size bed perfectly. Add some borders and there we go. The colors are great. I'm going to hold this to my arm right here so you can see after a white border. Okay. This is the fabric I'll put with it. See that how it matches really nicely with those browns. This is 108 inch. It was supposed to go on a different quilt, but it doesn't go with the other quilt because that quilt has more gold in it. This has the browns, definitely the lighter browns. So if I hold it up, you can see it definitely goes with these browns a lot better, you know? So this is my border fabric first border two. I'll get a white border first. So there's that. That's it guys. So I got this together in like six total hours or so six, seven hours because of the, the trimming and stuff obviously is part of it. So that's it. I'm going to lay this down right here and you guys can see my room is quite the disaster. I'll turn so you can see because I have all this disaster on my ironing board. <laughs> And there's stacks of stacks under these stacks. Over here. <laughs> there's so much going on in here. It's a disaster. So, all right. So that's finally complete. So I guys, all right, guys, let me look at some of these comments real quick. I'm going to sit down because I can turn everything off in here. See what you guys are saying. All right. Oh my God. Yes, I fell asleep on a gurney and ambulance. It didn't strap you down. That's fantastic. Love it. Nice. Can't wait to see it. I'm going to just attach the borders tomorrow, probably just to be done with it. Because that 108, all I have to do is cut four strips of whatever size border I choose because it's already 108. So it won't have no seams. I can actually do a mitered border with it if I want because it has no seams on the side. So it'll work out perfect. Uh, looks awesome. Borders I showed you. Nice border fabric. Going to look good. What color thread for quilting? Probably cream because cream goes with the browns, the blues, the, and the creams that are already in it. And it blends great with white. So probably a cream. Like uh, this isn't the one that I have in the garage, but it's kind of similar. My garage has all my... Um, it's a cream color. It's not white, but it's not you know, tan, it's cream. So I have one that's similar to this um, in the garage and my glide thread. I don't use glide thread in here, but I can't do any quilting on this on the long arm, which is the way I'll want to do it. I can't do that until winter time anyway, at least after September. So, all right guys. So there we go with a two and a uh half almost hour video <laughs> i'm trying to read the screen um i'm glad you guys came and joined me for this whole you know stay up late for you guys that are on the east coast and in other countries your daytime already so if that's good <laughs> for everyone else thank you for hanging out during insomniac hours um i love that you guys are all here and for anybody that's new coming to my channel don't forget to subscribe that corner right there there's a bell hit that um don't forget to like my videos you can share videos i highly recommend the more and more that i do of um, patterns share those um other than that uh i hope you guys enjoyed and i will see you guys sometime through the week i gotta get to that mariner star so that's coming just beware and it's gonna be live feeds like it was last time i just gotta get the videos made so all right good night everyone sleep well i will see you guys next time Bye-bye.